top level performers. When you're fortunate enough to have someone working with you who is a top level performer, it is important to do whatever you can to keep them engaged and interested and have them contribute at the highest possible levels. I have 20 years of experience across different organizations and I have seen a lot of C and D level players. A decent number, but not too many, but a decent number of Bs, but not that many As, right? So and I don't mean just performance, whether it's a technical or functional skill set that they possess, but it's more than that. It's personality, it's the drive, it's the attitude, it's the intellect. It's understanding the value of the team, respecting their colleagues and coworkers, working together, collaborating, um, being a wonderful member of the team. Someone who you want, you know, for the lack of better argument, to be your right-hand man or a woman, do whatever you can to retain them as long as you can. I've always talked about this in the past, about being proactive in acquiring such talent. But once you have them, Figure out what motivates them and do what you can to provide those things. To some, it's money. To most, money actually makes sense, right? If you're making whatever it is, 50, it's nice to make 70. If you're making 150, it's nice to make 200. If you're making 250, well, it's nice to make 320. I don't know, right? Whatever the numbers may be, obviously that always helps. But that alone is not enough for top performers, for most top performers to stay longer. What it comes down to, it's generally progress, it's fulfillment, it's connecting them to the mission of the organization, having them buy into the vision of the top executive team, of the leadership, and have them actually have an integral ownership and part of that vision and delivering it every single day and making it a reality. So when you get an opportunity to work with an A-level, top-level talent. Do whatever you can to retain them on your team for as long as you can, because at some point they will leave, right? Whether to go somewhere else or to start their own business. But your chances of having them for you know decades are slim. So while you have them and they're working with you and they're making you look good, if you happen to be a leader, and it doesn't matter what level of leadership, um, you perform at, whether you are the CEO and chairman of an organization or an entry-level manager or mid-level manager or director, wherever you operate, if that member, if that individual is a member of your team, make sure you retain them for as long as you can and figure out what your top talent needs and provide that proactively. This is the key. This is the most important component. Don't wait for them to come into your office with a, a letter you know, of, of a two weeks notice. At that point, it's too late. You lost them, they're gone. Even if you do a counter offer and you match whatever they're getting somewhere else, you've only prolonged that for a couple months at best because mentally they've checked out and they left, which will be soon enough followed by them physically actually departing from your business. So do whatever you can to treat your top best people in your team the way they deserve to be treated because not everyone is the same not everyone contributes the same way I'm not talking about rights and privileges i'm talking about compensation and recognition right those who get everything done and they're amazing at what they do and someone who you know gets every seventh project right should not be treated the same way should not be given the same opportunities have a wonderful day. I wish you all the best. And look around. And take inventory and take stock of whether you're treating your top talent properly. Or better yet, maybe you are the top talent. And if you are, are you being treated properly? Have a wonderful day.